I'd like to thank uh, Professor Nick, uh, Nicole and Professor Swan for inviting me to this uh, beautiful campus. Uh, Swan took me around just a uh, few minutes ago to campus. Um, I, uh, this is a lovely campus. I really admire it. I, admired it. Uh, I, I feel that why, why didn't I come here earlier when I was close by the Douglas University? Uh, uh, it's, it's really a pleasure to uh, to be in this kind of setting. Uh, you can share, really share your thoughts and tentative thoughts with your colleagues. Um, so today, uh, my topic is charismat charismatic politics, mouth call according to Alan Badil. Uh, we might begin by taking a look at uh, this picture. Uh, this, of course, represents uh, the study sessions. Uh, uh, it's very massive. You have, you have uh, workers up front, and the peasants in the middle, women, uh, and the soldiers who are the people uh, who make up the majority of the Chinese population in North China. They have uh, Mao's works, open books. Uh, uh, they've been reading, obviously, and they are looking forward uh, to a bright future. And they, they are embedded, uh, immersed in this uh, flowery setting, and it's, it's like spring. Um, uh, so this is very, very uh, ritualistic uh, <coughs> picture and ritualistic activity. They might be reading works Mao, they may also be reading the Mao's Little Red Book, right? Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the line below the picture says that the, uh, we want to raise uh, uh, the, the new wave of studying Mao's works. So Mao's works here appear to be uh, sacred books that everybody have to study again and again. And constantly recite and constantly talk about uh, uh, how the book, uh, how the wisdom of the book applies to itself. Okay, this is a, a part of the picture. Reading is part of the, this um, mouse cult, right? Now, a lot of critics know, notice that uh, there is this kind of religious flavor to study activities, study sessions. Uh, now, we, we can actually demonstrate uh, how religious uh, this kind of activity is. Uh, the picture on the left uh, is um, uh, about Mao going to a coal mine in Anyuan. Uh, Anyuan coal mine is Jiang province. Um, it was made during the Cultural Revolution and it's, uh, it's 2.2 meters high and 1.8 wide. Uh, it was uh, made and it was had tons of millions and millions of reprints and it published in the newspapers uh, and, and hang up in the, in the hallway at the uh, ubiquitous at the time. Of course, it's, it's about Mao as a uh, union activist. Right? He's going there to um, help with uh, organization of, of, of the strike, of the union activity to, for, for workers to fight for their right to work, uh, fight for, for equal pay, that kind of uh, activity. And you can see that uh, this picture uh, resonates with the picture on the on the right. Uh, you have a, a picture of the Virgin with the, the child. This is the founding moment, right? The birth of the of the Christ of Christ, of Christ. and uh, uh, and you have a towering figure in the, in the, at the center uh, with all the other things, uh, even mountains, right? It's, it's overshadowed, overpowered by this towering religious figure. So there's a salvation theme there, uh, there is a founding, founding theme there, and there is this kind of sublime figure of, of, of history uh, that carries tremendous religious connotation. Now, about religion and revolution, 
But all many, many, many uh, critics have uh, sort of a take a note of that, all right? Uh, David Apter and Tony Sarge, uh, in their wonderful book, uh, Revolutionary Discourse in Mao's Republic, uh, says that the, uh, it basically dates, uh, trace, traces uh, this religious activity in the Cultural Revolution back to the revolutionary experience in Yan'an, that's, uh, that's revolutionary days back in the 1930s and 40s. Right. Uh, they said that the Yan'an Mass Study Program Right, it's, it's uh, everybody study Mao's book uh, and other books too. Right, contain quote certain proper religious characteristics intertwined in a secular theory of politics that identify <coughs> logos with power. There are several things here. One 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 key word is religious characteristics, but it's also the Secular thing, the secular movement, social movement, uh, Chinese revolution is a secular, uh, is without, <coughs> should, should be without religious connotation, um, association, but still, uh, the religious flavor uh, activity really gets into that. Right. And then, logo, uh, you identify logo with power. <coughs> It uh, means the words. Logo is the words, right? Words, words, words. Uh, it is not just simply words. Uh, words have power to to influence people, to arouse people's consciousness, to to have control over. <coughs> uh, I think what is missing from this uh, from this uh, argument is that the logos. This is the focus on the logos. Uh, my sense of this whole religious activity with these old images and uh, uh, visual clues and color and um, emotional response like smile and looking forward those things are aesthetics it works on emotion on, on your sense, sense sense and sensibility right, uh, and create an ambience that's aesthetic so what, what is missing in, in their argument about this religion and and, and politics, uh, revolutionary politics, is, is, is the ethos, uh, some kind of a, a aesthetically conditioned sort of a activity and experience. <coughs> right. So, so I would I would move from this logos to a more theor sort of a for more more aesthetic discussion of religious or quasi religious art experience. Um, now, it is not really news that the re religion uh, religions religious mode of thinking and acting is part of modern politics. Uh, uh, somebody like uh, Carl Schmitt has said that the, the, our modern concepts of uh, uh, politics uh, actually uh, have buried beneath them uh, the religious uh, way of thinking, theological way of thinking. So, so, so he says that modern politics uh, is the theology. Right in disguise, the only in disguise. You think you you think you are you you vote with you with, with, with your feet with your pocket pocket book, but actually no, you, you you vote with your sense of how how this guy looks like, how this guy feel feel good to you, right? The the, the, the t-shirt he's wearing, the smile and performance. I mean, think about all comments on on the, on the election, the debate. I mean, most of the talks about how 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 he performed, how he. How he looks, how he feels to you, right? Uh, so it's actually, we are deep down in our heart. We are we are true believer. Uh, we we are sucked into this aesthetic atmosphere very very quickly. Uh, we, we, we we deal with politics without thinking, without analysis. But right? basically, just hang on, it's relied on our aesthetic sort of experience, relied on the the, 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 the the cultic cultic flavor, cultic charm of the leader and and political. Uh, uh, sort of a power, okay. Now, uh, so, so this has to do with the connection between aesthetic and politics. Um, uh, aesthetics is closely related to religion in the sense that religion works uh, on the sense and sensibility with the heart and soul and the mind and, and also the uh, the, the body of the believers, uh, 
uh, Aldo Sayer has a very, very nice uh, sort of a, uh, way of talking about uh, this kind of experience of religion and, uh, and, and ideology, or not public ideology. He said that if you, when you kneel on your knees in, in a church setting, you kneel on your knees and you move your lips to pray, to pray and you will believe. You, you believe not because you, you, you think rationally about this icon will bring you a future or icon will you, you know, sort of give you a better life. You, you just do, the, do these things, these, these religious aesthetic things that this is embodied. Move your lips to enchant the words and you will, you will believe, right? So this kind of connection, there are two, two ways of thinking about it, these two connections between aesthetic or religious activity uh, with, with, with the ideology, with power. Uh, one, one, one way is the aestheticization of politics as described by Walter Benjamin. Uh, if you read uh, the works out in the, in the uh, in age of mechanical production, that's the last pa passage, talk, passage talks about how uh, Nazis glorified the war, or glorified the firepower, right? And it's so beautiful, tanks are so beautiful. Uh, it reminds me of the Iraq war, right? Our, our missile is so beautiful, right? It's, so, it's like a video game, right? So you believe in the, in the beautiful uh, sublime power of, of the, of the uh, uh, aesthetics. That's aestheticization of politics. The basic that is a sort of a top-down because you want to uh, ensure the, the empire, right? The, 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 um, uh, ensure that the, uh, the, the followers would believe in the, the, the beautiful appearance of, of this empire. So you glorify by instead means the, the, the power of the, em the, the empire. But there's another way of, of looking at the issue that's bottom up. Now, what are, the one number you can think about uh, sort of uh, people on the ground, uh, communities, uh, grassroots people, uh, use aesthetic means to jump into the, uh, the political arena, to participate in the political process. And Charles uh, Jacques, Jacques Rancière, so the French thinker, also talks about this kind of a bottom up aestheticized politics. Uh, he, he uses the term the distribution of the sensible. Uh, what it says is basically that you, you, can, uh, you can participate, you can, you can have a shot at re scrambling the status quo uh, that is sort of a covered under the the, the a priori aesthetic sort of appearance, right? Our political arena is simply just a, a status quo. It's, it's a sort of unequal distribution of the sensible, the sensuality, uh, the body involvement. This is very unequal, but the, the, the marginalized people who can jump in and we scramble it and have their own voice, have a shot at political process. That is a bottom up, uh, just sort of a, a, a politi politicized uh, aesthetic activity. Now, now, with this framework, we will, uh, it's easier to talk about charismatic politics because you know, what, what is aesthetic? It's just the same the kind of charisma, it's personal charisma or charisma of a group, right? Now, uh, the, the bottom-up bottom connection, uh, bottom-up surge of aesthetic activity to, to participate in the political process could be understood in terms of charismatic politics, right? Now, uh, this charismatic politics is described by Andrea Calivar in his book, uh, Democracy and Politics of the Extraordinary. Now, first, why extraordinary? Extraordinary uh, because it's some kind of energy, some kind of movement that Go, go beyond the, your ordinary procedural, routinized, uh, bureaucratic, administrative politics, uh, 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 procedural politics. So it's, it's extraordinary. So 
He said that charismatic politics addresses religious movements striving to control their communities by challenging the existing dominant beliefs, symbolic syndications, and institutions. It sounds a little bit like Hans Yeh's thesis that somehow the aesthetic activity here uh, have, has this potential to challenge the status quo, challenge and subvert status quo. Okay? And the next one, proclaim a new value and epoch making vision of the world, right? seeking to respond, respond to the growing fears and distress of the masses and to capitalize on a shaky but increasing disillusionment vis-a-vis -vis the established authority. It seems to be not of the same, same thing, right? There's, there's a bottom-up surge of this kind of activity uh, to, and that's also like, there's the, the sense of looking forward to, a, to build a new, to reinstate a new world, right? To open up a new, new world. So this, this is a challenging dimension, and there is challenging potential, and there is uh, uh, the potential to open a new world. So this, is this top down or is this bottom up? Is it top down or bottom up, bottom up activity? Right. Uh, I would say that there is something like like a sort of a top down because then you capitalize on their shaky and increasing disillusion. When you play on the fear of the, of the masses, and somehow you control their thought. But that, that might be, uh, might be a, a top, regarded as top-down control, right? So the aesthetic activity and experience uh, are, are the means to have political control. But, but there is also a bottom up because you want to challenge the status quo, and you want to open up the new world, right? This is the, this is the bottom up. Uh, the the criticism about Mao's cult basically is very simple, right? It, it, it's, it's top down. Mao uses the activity, the, the reading, the discussion, and all of the stuff, the theater, just to consolidate his power, right? Um, uh, it, it's, uh, it's brainwashing. Uh, it's brainwashing, it's controlled by the mind. This is a very, it's really, really uh, the argument. Uh, 99% of scholars and historians will say this is the, the way it goes. But I, I disagree. So to, I, my, my talk is that what I will use uh, Alan Badiou, Alan Badiou's idea, reading of Mao's cult, to talk about there's something else going on there. Right? There's a bottom up. Also, there's a bottom up. So the search of popular energy in Mao's cult. So most cult is not, not so reaction, I mean, not, not so totalitarian or, or authoritarian or whatever. Uh, so religious control of people. Uh, uh, it, it also has a sense that it's just mobilizing, <coughs> mobilizing people to, to do something about the status quo. This is the Communist Party. It's a corrupt Communist Party. And to open up the new world, to make social change. Right, okay. Now, uh, Helen Badiou, first, uh, in response to the reading, the liberal reading of, of the books, the, the sacred books, the Mount Wade book, uh, the, the liberal reading says that, uh, well, reading books is just brainwashing, right? they're duped by this sacred thing. They're not very sacred. Right? Uh, uh, so this is a mythical thinking, theological thinking, religious thinking, you have blind faith, blind faith. He said, well, you, you liberal uh, thinkers actually venerize uh, the, the artist uh, as a uh, super genius uh, with extraordinary Im imagination and creativity. Uh, and then they create art. Like, like a, they have a god-like creativity. They are inspired by news. And their words, uh, 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 put into canon, right? Uh, school children have to recite it, uh, recite it, and to to live by these words. Isn't that religious thinking? Isn't that the cultic thinking, right? Uh, 
you, you believe in something, you believe in blindly in something that is very, very sacred, right? It, you don't quite use your mind. This is the truth. You, you really have the answer. You put the answer to, to your life's question to, to this mystified genius that is the, the romantic artist. Now, uh, if it is okay to admire or worship the romantically inspired artist uh, as a godlike figure, as a cult figure like Shakespeare and Goethe or whatever, but why, why is it not okay to worship or to, to admire Mao as an artist of state building? He's an artist of politics, right? So this is, maybe it's, it's more meaningful to secularize political innovator or the political creator, to create a community, create an organization, create a new state, right? But why, why is it not okay? Uh, why is it illeg illegitimate, right? Because it's, a, it's like a political creation. It's, it's like an artist crea artistic creation. It's much more risky than, than the, the book created a book. More, more risky and more immediately addressed to all. Addressed to all. It's not to all readers. It's addressed to everybody who is part of the community, right? It's to create a political community as if you are creating a work of art and you address everybody, because everybody has to participate, have a share, have a share in this community. So, so this is the way of responding to the liberal criticism of, of this kind of realm of thing, cultic activism, work then And also another target, the political target that he's responding to is the, the liberal politics, the like procedural politics. Uh, and China in the, uh, in the 1950s and the 1960s uh, um, already has this kind of very, very congealed uh, political situ situation where you governed by a really very elaborate bureaucracy uh, and administrative apparatus, right? A top heavy, top heavy. Uh, this is basically uh, sort of a vaporous argument about the modern rationalization of the political system. Right? You have more and more about paperwork, about procedure, and think about in the in a, in a Nazi uh, Holocaust, the, the scientist uh, Eichmann just signed off the signed the paper, right? He killed six million people just signing the paper, just very bureaucratic. Uh, but it's, you know, there's no blood blood stain there. It's so so uh, apt, so normal, so 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 normal, so banal, right? so banal. So, the, so the, these people, these kind of like bureaucrats, uh, governing the country, running the country, running the people, uh, economists, uh, they're, they're technocrats. They are, they are uh, for for laborers, they are specialists <coughs> without a car. It's it's, it's a machine, it's a machine, right? Uh, uh, the the comic comic party has become more and more like that, right? For for uh, Alan Badiou, Alan Badiou is, is also thinking about French comic party. It's become very dogmatic. It's like a machine apparatus. Uh, it's a look, it's just out of touch, out of touch with the with workers, peasants, the French in France, right? So so it's, Alan Badiou makes a break, broke away during the cultural revolution. It's a Maoist broke away from his dogmatic the French Communist Party and forms their own party. But a lot, a lot of splitter parties at that time. Because they're all like following the example of cultural revolutionary records. They are also records in, in France, right? So they, they, they build their own parties uh, from the front of the bottom up. Okay. So he, he you know, responding to this kind of you know, sort of bureaucratic administrative politics, he, he said that like Mao's cult actually has something uh, stirring, something exciting about it. Uh, one person, right, in a, in a single body comes to stand for the superior guarantee, the classical form of genius. Again, we're back to the artistic, artistic creativity as a genius. Okay. It also is very curious to see that trained as we are in a theory of genius, in the realm of art, we should take such strong offense at it when it emerges in the order of politics. Again, if it's the artistic creation, uh, why, why would 
why would just blame it? Why would just criticize it, right? Or, or demonize it? Yeah. Um, the personal genius is only the incarnation of the representative capacity of the party. It's easier to believe in the rectitude and the intellectual force of a distant and solitary man than in the truth and purity of an apparatus. So you believe in the machine or you believe in embodied, embodied sort of an icon, let's say. You believe in the machine or, or, or sort of an embodied icon. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the question. He, he, I think he, he feels that it's more, well, it's probably politically more encouraging, inspirational uh, than uh, uh, to, to, to actually believe in some kind of inspirational icon than to just to go by this, uh, to, to go to go to paperwork by those bureaucrats uh, and go by, by the way of uh, apparatus. Okay. Now, uh, this reading of the mouse cult actually is connected with his uh, veneration of another mouse work. Uh, mouse work is the, the, the foolish old man uh, who, who removed the mountain. Uh, <coughs> this, this work uh, Lao Shan, this is part of Lao Shan Pian, uh, five, uh, sort of three, three essays that have been read over and over again. People, school, school children actually, were actually uh, forced to recite. I, I, I was able to recite some of it when I was, uh, at the time. Oh, very, very long. Actually. One, one essay has three thousand, two or three thousand words. I mean, you can just recite all of it. One time in, in this, in the school um, uh, examination, in the first few years, the culture we still have some school, and we were in, 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 in this classroom, and the, uh, the teacher came in and said, well, today we have nothing uh, to, to teach, uh, but we would just like you to, uh, like you to have a, piece, a sheet of paper and just put down whatever you know about, about mouth, mouth quotation. You, you have the, the red book everywhere, the little red book everywhere. So just put down, put down on paper whatever you, you remember of mouth. I read, read so, and I, 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 I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. I, I, I think I, I, I put, put down about, about 60, to, uh, 60 and, and 70 uh, quotes from from Mount Vito Red Red Books. Uh, yeah, we quite a long, long quote. A lot of other people also take, uh, could also uh, do that, right? That's, that's, that's what I do still, just sort of like the, so sort of etched in, in, in my memory. Uh, I, after the Cultural Revolution, uh, I, I, I don't if I don't know me as so religious, so so bad. Uh, why 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 couldn't I have a chance to to recite Tang poems? Uh, it's much much more it's much richer, more 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 literary, right? Poetic, right? Tang poem may be better. Right? But think back from from Badu's point of view. We see something very, very interesting going on here. Uh, he 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 uses the, this this uh, the, the old man who we bring Moon Mountain to talk about how to create a new subjectivity, how to overcome the status quo, how to change uh, the status quo. Okay. Uh, now the, this this is a fable uh, that is named, was mentioned by Mao in a speech in the uh, Seventh uh, Party Congress in 1940s. Uh, at that time, the, uh, the, the communism, the communist uh, uh, was actually breaking away from uh, the United Front with, uh, with uh, uh, nationalists and, and the, uh, the anti-Japanese uh, war was still going on, right, sort of, uh, in a full swing. So they, 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 the communist and revolutionary forces had tremendous obstacles in front of them. Uh, the, the, the story, the fable, is from the ancient Chinese text, uh, in, uh, in the Taoist text. It says that the, uh, this old man uh, uh, in northern North China has a house right in the, uh, in the village, and in front of them there are two big mountains. So he said, one day he said, said to his, his children, his son, uh, we're going to dig up, uh, just uh, pick up some hands, dig up a mountain. And he's laughed at, well, how can, how can you do that? He said, well, I'll just try to do it. Uh, uh, when I die, my son will just carry on. Uh, when my son dies, 
uh, then my, um, my, my son's son, grandson will carry on. Keep, keep doing it, and you, you, you just move, remove mountains, right, right? But remove mountains has become an sort of iconic, sort of iconic political gesture, political momentum uh, that has been absorbed by a lot of the activists uh, during the Cultural Revolution and in the, in the 60s in the West, right? I still heard uh, Black, Black Panther movement, Black, 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 Black Lives Matter, and they still use the word to move the mountains, right? Now, the uh, interesting thing about his reading, about reading is, is that uh, uh, Mamao says that we, what we can get from the, uh, from the, the fable uh, is that there are two mountains uh, at the front of us, right? Like a dead weight on the Chinese people, right? One is imperialism, Japanese, right? The other is feudalism, it's the old traditional society that drag us down. The Communist Party has long made up its mind to dig them up, following the example of the foolish, foolish old man, the foolish theory is interesting. We too will touch God's heart. Well, touch God's heart because the, the, uh, I'm sorry, I, I missed one, one very, very important link in the fable. The, the, old, the old man is trying to dig up the mountains, and they dig and dig, dig, and they, they move the fairies in the sky. They move the fairies in the sky. Uh, they move God in the sky. God has sent two fairies down to carry, two fairies to carry the mountain away. So it's clear, it's clear. Right, so, so he said, we too, Mao said, we too will move God. Right. We touch God's heart. Our God is none other than the masses of the Chinese people. If they stand up and dig together with us, why can these two mountains be clear away? Okay. You can have several readings, and this is a new interview. Is, is it top down or is it bottom up? Is it the leader taking the show or is the people taking the show? <coughs> right. uh, Alan Bardieu says that, well, this, this can be a cliche, a cliche, a Western cliche, like God has those who help and serve, right? Uh, that, it says, he said that that's cliche. That does not apply to the situation. Right. Uh, what is important about this text? is having confidence in oneself in the mode of the destructive seizure of local constraint. What is a destructive seizure means to, uh, he's talking about how to how you cut one thing into two. Uh, if and we are, right, to just to, to destroy the current state of quo, right? Uh, and you should have a tremendous uh, confidence in your own ability to do that. And that the ability actually generates the, the potential generates the process or the formation of the subject. Uh, the formation of the subject is the, uh, in, the, in, the, in terms of Rancière, in, the, in terms of the whole French Maoist activist, uh, is really like the uses sub, subjection, sub, subjectivation, right? It's very, very uh, sort of a uh, it's a very awkward word, subjectivation. I, mean, I, I was just thinking, it's just formation of subject, or ra in, the, in the old sense, the raising of consciousness, the raising of consciousness. Right. Uh, that, that, that situation. So the the whole uh, foolish old man give us an example of uh, having confidence in ourselves, and this having com this confidence generates the process of the subject. The genie is what everyone will miss. The creativity, the overcoming of the mountain, uh, the force, uh, the energy. That's all contained in the gene, in this destructive and creative gene. Right? Uh, it's what everyone will make. Thousands of men armed with pickaxe. As long as against their re own resignation, you have been the Prometheus of a particular destruction. Now, so is it top down or is it bottom up? Now, it's line become very, it's very, very hard to draw a line now because you, you have the leader arousing the people, then you have the people jumping, joining in, and become their own leaders. Uh, so some critics think that uh, this 
sort of uh, this you, this meeting of the foolish old man, why did the gap, the religious gap between the leader and the lad? Uh, but by saying that the uh, millions of people can take the pickaxe and, and it's also become Prometheus, they, they themselves can uh, become Prometheus, uh, uh, that, that, that is powerful enough to remove the mountain, it sutures the gap between heaven and earth. Now, the, the peasants, the, the diggers, uh, take the initiative and take the things on, onto their own hands and try to control their destiny. So here we have leader return to the lab, among the lab, and they work together, the Communist Party work together with the masses in order to accomplish the job of removing the two mountains, imperialism and liberalism. Uh, so this is really the, the mass line, really. Mass line, really. mass line says that the Communist Party should listen to the people. I get the idea, get the opinion, get the truth for the people, and then formulate policy and return it to the people to make society better. Uh, this is really the, the last, last Chun Zhong Zhong I talked in the movie, right? It's a circle. So this, this is really talking, discusses the resonance, resonance, a very tight organic resonance between the leader and, and the lad. And that is the sort of a aesthetic picture, it's also an artistic picture of, of, of the, the, the party, party and, and masses kind of connection. And that is absent from the bureaucratic organization of governance, of the administrative, uh, administrative sort of apparatus that, that run, runs the uh, population, run, runs the, 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 the country. Okay. Uh, so I would say, um, to conclude, that there are, yeah, there are top-down party or uh, personal manipulation control of the masses, but there are other lines uh, that actually point to a more, much more resonant, much more reciprocal, uh, organic relationship between the leader and the lad. And I hope, I hope this is uh, this is clear. And I hope it's, it's a good reading of. But you was um, desire to see some sort of creative and resurgent sort of creative moments in this uh, connection between aesthetics and mental. I am talking about how Aryan Badu and the mid-64, the mid-68 generation that he belonged to, and how they actually read the Cultural Revolution that is happening in China. Mm. And they have all the access to Mao's work, but they don't have the access to what's going on within the territory of China. And just like to get all, all the Cold War projects that they have to come into play. And also the performativity of French intellectuals who have to play that role of radical leftism in the light of the fall of Stalinism and other things like that. And so Maoism is like the third way for them, right? So it was a very specific reading of Maoism and his theory. And um, the second question I want to, I'm still formulating the second question that I, what, what I'm trying to suggest is uh, the idea that there is top-down or bottom-up processes in the Maoist discourse. Um, I think it also ignores another question of who the people really are. Mm -hmm. If you talk about going to the masses or letting the masses come in to your own discourse, but the mass, I mean, we are talking about a very specific category that is legitimately the masses, right? Mm -hmm. but, but the people as a category is um, it's kind of like a more general subject to it. And I, I, I just probably have a problem. Okay, the first question about uh, uh, 
they, are, they seem to, to be ignorant, and all knowledge like the idealist knowledge that seem to be ignorant of the, uh, uh, the political trauma uh, and persecution and chaos. I think they know. Actually, they knew what's going on there. Right? But uh, they see more than uh, the disaster. They see that they see that. Actually, uh, the Jewry in his writing that he said that Maoism has a, a, a lot of sort of manipulation uh, in people's minds. Right. But he's reading from, uh, uh, you know, he's reading Mao in order to find something revolutionary. Because he's really fed up with this kind of bureaucratic, uh, depoliticized infrastructure, depoliticized system in the East and the West. Right? It's like almost like a global sort of a corruption from political process. Become more and more technocratic. The, the Cold War, Cold War politics become much, much more top heavy. Right, he's, he's really fed up with that. Uh, so he sees a sort of like a, a story, uh, sort of message, right, in, in France and in, in, in China. He's, he, he looks at that, that part, right? I think that, that, that point is quite valid, quite, quite valid. Right? Uh, that motivates him to break away from the dogmatic Marxist party, right, uh, in France. Uh, come from him in France, and he actually motivated him to to, to criticize Arthur Sayer. Arthur Sayer is kind of very very heavy kind of bureaucratic masses, and, and and to to allow them uh, on his associates to go to the, the French peasant to, to understand understand French society uh, at its uh, so at, at the grassroots. Right, that, that's the very very venerable. Picture. Uh, uh, it's a very. And another thing about this is that the, the, the model, the model has been overwhelming. Uh, the, the cult has been overwhelming read as, as something totalitarian. Right. So he, he just wants to say something, something, something different there. You think about it, the, the, the aesthetic activity, the movements, uh, in all the insurgent uh, 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 revolutionary. Uh, community, you know, so like maybe Martin Luther King, or maybe in, uh, in the French French Revolution in the past, uh, English Revolution. Uh, there is this, this kind of uh, uh, extraordinary en energy coming out, right? We're using aesthetic means, the slogans, the narratives, the images, and so on and so forth. But this re rebuild something. To rebuild something, right? The mouth may not be rebuilding it, but the whole message says to him right, that he's rebuilding it. There's, there's a political model to follow, right? He may be destroying it, right? Destroying and rebuilding. Uh, he says that, that like, poor bully, right? You don't just destroy, you don't, don't build, right? Uh, right. He, he read that message, and that message is valid. Yeah. Even though, in, in, in fact, it's not happening. Even though, in fact, it's not happening. He, he get a concept, he get a lesson from that, right? So, uh, see what I mean? Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't have to say, oh, this is untrue, untrue to reality. This is untrue in, in terms of political imagination. It's a very true to political imagination, very true. History is very valid, right? Very true, very valid, right? right. Uh, <coughs> okay. um, thank you for your talk. Um, one thing that I find um, is missing in the discussion here is Badu's broader analysis of the cultural revolution, as he says, as the last revolution, uh, meaning that it is the exhaustion of the political sequence centered on the party state. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you've spoken about the party and about bureaucracy, but the, for me, the key question here, rather than being top down or bottom up and so on, is the entire 20th century sequence of revolutionary politics centered on and existing within the form of the state. Mm -hmm. um, now, starting with 1917, there is the fusion of the party and the state. Yeah. And the Cultural Revolution represents a mobilization against the state, but 
which is constantly positioning itself with reference to the dismissal of a particular figure in the state, to factionalization surrounding particular figures and their positions in the state. So uh, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about this, because this is about you coming to terms precisely with, this, with, with the fact of the um, repression that happened in the Cultural Revolution, but alongside genuine mass mobilization. Yeah, I, I, th I think this is a very, very good, uh, really a very, very good question. Uh, the, qu the question is that the, the state of the state, uh, the, the disillusion, the disillusion in the statist structure, statist sort of a depolitified uh, democratic stru structure, where it is out of touch, out of touch with uh, the masses, the, the common people. Uh, that's the point. Um, that uh, in disillusionment, that you go, that is, uh, it, it is, also, it's, uh, it's true of, of French children, right? It's kind of a high up, high up state, right? Top heavy state, and, and it's out of touch with the, with the community and, and the people. Uh, he, he sees, he is not uh, counting on the state when, when he's talk, talking about the cult leader, right? The cult, cult leader is separate. It's one embodied genius. It's separate from apparatus in the one it's called. Apparatus that means status. So his uh, strategy is that to take up the creative moment from the earlier fusion, earlier fusion, right? This mass line, earlier fusion, state and state and people fusion uh, it depends on the organic relationship, right? Organic relationship between the leader and, and the lab. He takes that out, but he, he does not equate the cult leader with the state structure. So it, after in, 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 in France, they, they, they advocate of some kind of small community self direction, like small community and, uh, 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 and small groups uh, may take the lead to control their own destiny. Uh, it's become a more almost like the anarchist situation. Uh, in China, this, this way of thinking uh, is uh, it's also quite quite active uh, in some of the marginal groups. They have their own communities. Uh, they, they, they're far away from the state structure. Uh, they, they take the lead. They become the, 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 the workers and the peasants group, especially workers. They, they become the leaders themselves. Right? The, 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 uh, the state innovation actually comes a little bit later. Um, in general, historical uh, narrative of the cultural revolution is that uh, uh, it says that uh, the, uh, the state invention uh, re-control, re re reordering of chaotic society. Uh, that it comes, it, it comes a little bit later in the early 70s, late 60s and early 70s. But that that is still juncture uh, is restoration of bureaucracy, restoration of, 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 of the more statist uh, policy construction. Yeah. And, and the military control is, is part of it. military control. Because the, you said it, uh, the, the party said military to, to control the, the Red Army. Uh, that, that is the key moment. Right. Yes. Yeah, thank you for your talk. Um, I, as you uh, began, I, I was reminded that uh, uh, Aristotle too talks about poetics and politics. And, right? uh, though he has a rather more narrow version of uh, who gets to practice politics. Right. Yeah. Uh, not uh, women, slaves, and mechanicals. Uh, the, uh, I, I wonder, in, in, in the view that you, uh, you have of, of, of now, do you see any difference between uh, uh, religion on the one hand and theology on the other? Uh, religion is, you know, often taken as a practice, practice, right? Uh, you know, a cultic practice, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is different from theories about the gods. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, are, are those two actually folded over in, in, in what you see in the cultural revolution? Uh, I, I don't see I don't see the, uh, a matter 
discussion of religion. Right? I, mean, I mean, theology is sort of a like, kind of next step back uh, to look at uh, uh, to have a theory of religious assumptions. I would say, right? theological, right? right. Uh, uh, belief structures. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, it's some kind of a theorization of religious experience. The religious ritual, religion of that. Uh, uh, but I, I, I uh, in 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 the literary, the cultural literature, I don't really see this kind of uh, sort of a step back uh, look. Of course, the after and Sand, where I, I quoted uh, their, their their quote, uh, they step back. They they, they, they use the theological <laughs> idea. Of Talk about this. What looks like a secular, secular revolutionary communist movement actually is a theological movement. It is something about about the uh, sort of uh, the future paradise. <coughs> so, uh, it's secular religion. Right? That, that's, that, that is already a step back. I mean, look at the theological. But Aristotle, I, I would say, uh, really has a. Uh, very, very interesting uh, take. We'll, we'll, we'll have very interesting take on this when, when he said that the people are actually political animals. And political animals, they, they have a share in the political arena. Uh, and Hannah Heron said that, I think that you just uh, you have to meet people, model, meeting people, and make a speech. Right. They use a logo, logo, right? Logo is the words, right? To make speech in order to have that. that to redistribute the sensibility uh, and, and words, we redistribute it. Yeah. And this actually is also happening in study session. You, uh, there's another interpretation of the study session in cultural literature. People have to take the mouse words and run, it, run their own, own mileage, right? run their own, own, own show. Right? Uh, it's not just following the mouse, following the mouse. Right? They just do their own, own interpretation. Right? Uh, that, that is that's kind of fluid, very fluid, multi dimensional sort of. Uh, Use or maybe abuse of the mom at the time. Um, I can you go back to the very first slide, the first image that we've been showing us? That before that, yes. No. So uh, I can't see it entirely sure, but it seems that these people are studying is. Uh, the fifth volume of Mao's uh, selected works. Yeah. I think you see it here. Yeah. Now, uh, that's uh, more than a curiosity because it kind of changes the, the equation here. The fifth <coughs> volume of Mao's works was published in 1977, a year after Mao's death and after the official end of the Cultural Revolution, and it was very controversial and was uh, retracted a year later. Um, so this is after the death of Mao, uh, now at a moment where uh, the figure of the charismatic figure of the charismatic politics is taken out of the uh, equation, we eliminate it. Now uh, that seems to do two things to the processes that you've been discovering. On one hand, it foregrounds the representative function, was the embodiment itself is uh, no longer there. But uh, on the other hand, it also, uh, seems to uh, um, uh, heighten uh, the question of agency and the question of purpose uh, behind uh, this top-down or bottom-up processes uh, that are taking place. So my question is, uh, how do these two processes, uh, 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 how do, are they reconciled? Representation uh, with an empty, hollow center here. Uh, and on the other hand, the purpose is uh, the, the, the functions to which this, uh, this uh, political theology can be put here, uh, especially in this curious interim here, these two years after. Well, the, the two years after, I, mean, I, I don't have to use, use this one. This is really, I, I, yeah. I didn't even look at the volume. It's a really much, much, much later than that. But it does not, uh, does not actually sort of uh, rule out uh, the I mean, they use another one. The same setting, the same look, the same uh, so the ambient. Right. You can, you can take another one. Just really, yeah. I can take another one from that. It's really it's, it's a, it's a part scenario that is important. But the, I mean, about 1977, right, there is also a return, uh, return to to, to yes, teaching right, at the time. Even after the conference, still return to so that. Uh, 
Well, Google took, took, took power and he said to have that he had to jumpstart, jumpstart with kind of a mm -hmm. sort of mouse, mouse way, right? A study way of, of, of mouse tech because he wanted to show up his own position, right? And it's a very precarious position. Uh, because he, he, uh, he uh, uh, and Deng and, uh, and the whole group around there and the students find way out of fish and out, fish and out. Right. So he came and he used, he used Mao to try to show up the own position. Uh, another thing about representation, uh, uh, rep representation of representational or uh, substantive, right? So, and is there a purpose? And doing that. Well, the purpose here would be just for Huago from the post 77. That, that's, that's critical use of it, instrumentality. Yeah. Yeah, critical use of, of this kind of uh, reading and sort of celebrating most works. Yeah. So, can this charismatic politics still function after the charismatic figure? <coughs> Uh, was it doomed to fail? Yeah, it, it, I, I don't think it's doomed after after 1977. It, it was really very much discredited in the early 80s when people uh, had the time, uh, had the, some room to, to wake up from the trauma, right? uh, had the room to reflect on the trauma, reflect on what Mao has done. Uh, to, uh, to be after, I think in the 19, early 1980s, it's more, more meditative, more reflective uh, about, about this kind of thing. No. I have a question about the next slide. Uh, and this is kind of an outsider's question. But I was in intrigued by your choice of the Christian image of the Virgin and Child and so forth uh, in terms of illustrating the relationship between religion and politics and that you then added to that by suggesting the posture of kneeling and that kind of thing uh, as representing religious practice. Does this come from the French take on all of this or does this come from the strength of Christianity in China? Because there are many world religions uh, some of which are not at all characterized by a posture of kneeling in conjunction with prayer, or not at all characterized by that type of iconic image of what it is to engage in religious practice. Yeah, uh, I don't know if, if this one is just deliberately copied copy this one, but uh, artists, they, they, they've been exposed to Western painting. Uh, uh, all kind of paintings of all year. Right. They, they might have seen, uh, the art might have seen, this is a collection of collective artists like the Liu Chung Hua is the head of this whole collection, mm -hmm. made this picture. Uh, so they, they, most of them had a very rigorous exposure to, to some of the uh, Western art but in, in, in picture books, because in art, picture books. But even though those things are condemned as the book of uh, Decadent, and they still have the chance to, to, to read those things uh, when, when they are training as a student in high school before corporation. Before, before uh, uh, so, so this image may be working uh, unconsciously, right? To, to build similar to the uh, power figure in the middle and all the other things like just the subordinate. It's like a like triangle. I wonder if you could uh, briefly address uh, the question of the moment and the reason for and the means by which thinkers like Badu or around the Kerkeg movement actually started to deal with the fact that this notion of subjectivization or whatever um, might in fact lead to a descending view or might not be the room for a dissenting view or for the genius as artists. Mm -hmm. What was the moment when there was a um, when this was understood and theorized? To, to in the West. Descend, descending view and uh, 
descending and ascending. No, no, no. Descending. What is descending? Descending. Uh, yeah. I, I think the. But do try to find descending view. Of course, he finds his, his, himself as a descender. Right? Uh, he, he breaks away. Right? He, he, he breaks away from his party. Right? And form his own party. He, he's a descender. But in, the, in his face in the people, uh, he also has this dissenting view. He sees potential for people to, 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 to break away from the bureaucracy, bureaucratic party machine. That's a dissenting view. But it's both dissenting and creative, because they are going to create their own group, own identity. Yeah, I think it's also within and under a charismatic figure. Within their their own charismatic figure, right? They, they can use mouth quotation, they can use slogans, but like a picture of placards or all the posters. They use use those things to do their own thing. And there is still a tremendous or or electric or aura attached to that to that thing to that their, their activity. They sing songs song all the time, the sort of slogan all the time, they tell stories all the time. So that that is the, it's, it's descending from the status quo. It's descending from status quo. But also creating their own things. 